Hello everyone, this is Shahar with Spill the Beans TV. And today we have a very special guest, Nefer Kane and her dolls. And we are going to talk now a little bit um, uh, about being a doll maker, right? Welcome, Nefer. Did I Thank pronounce you. her, your name right? Wonderful. Okay, good. <laughs> I think you're the only one to have pronounced oh, boy. it well. Oh, really? <laughs> Nobody can, yeah. That's awesome. Nefer Kane, that's awesome. Oh, that's right. good because I usually get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> So, so first, Nefer, t tell me a little bit about yourself. So, uh, I'm French. Okay. I'm a single mother of two little boys, oh. Louis and Arnaud. Louis is 10 years old and Arnaud is 8 and Arnaud is autistic. We live at my parents' house where I'm born mm -hmm. and uh, we live on the French Riviera in France. Nice. Uh, just next to Cannes. We have a huge time difference, but right now it's like 3 in the morning in France. Yes. And, and that's your normal working hour, right? Well, you know, I'm just like in the middle of my day right now, so <laughs> yeah, that's okay for me. That's because uh, my my kids are homeschooling, mm -hmm. and my mother is taking care of them in the morning, and I do the afternoon. Okay. So I never get up before two in the afternoon, mm -hmm. two p.m. So uh, it allows me, you know, to work till. Uh, Seven or eight in the morning, and I have all night quiet and control. Right. To, to so you work. can really focus. When did you start, and why you decide to go with dolls? I was uh, a single mother, uh -huh. and uh, I learned that my younger child is ha having autism, and it's been for me uh, probably the worst thing in my life. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. People say some people say that it's 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 God's gift or something like that. But uh, honestly, you, you you cannot tell a parent that, uh, that his child's handicap is, is a gift. Mm -hmm. In no way. I mean, my son is struggling for every single simple thing mm -hmm. day, every day of his life. Uh, everything is difficult for him. Mm -hmm. uh, in France, I must say that uh, autism particularly is not recognized at all so uh, people just think he's just dumb mm -hmm. which is wow. the complete opposite and nothing is created here for children like Arno so it's very very complicated okay and I decided to keep him at home mm -hmm. I didn't want him to be institu institutionalized you know I, I wanted him to, to have a normal life so I had to stay at home so I couldn't work uh -huh. <laughs> And uh, uh, and that's your government. that's your younger kid, right? Yes. Okay, and that's the one that is also artistic. Yeah. Okay. Good. So my my my, my government is giving a, a little a, a very very little bit of a money when you have an an handicapped child. So yes. uh, I was very very poor and uh, I was completely stuck in my house. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the on, the only window I had on the world was internet. I see. And uh, um, I decided that I needed a hobby, mm -hmm. so you know I googled a few things, and uh, I found someone. Mm -hmm. I found Christy Friesen. She is a, a, a polymer clay sculptor, and uh, she was selling books, pretty pretty cheap books. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I checked, and polymer clay was pretty cheap too. <laughs> so I said, okay, we're gonna try that, you know, because I was just going a little bit of mad. And uh, um, I saved money mm -hmm. to afford Christie's book. It was twenty-five dollars, but uh -huh. at this moment I was very, very poor. So I saved money. I bought a little piece of polymer clay, and then I made a little dragon, and I loved it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so uh, you know, it, it's it's been something so wonderful in my life. Suddenly to make to make something and and to have that feeling that. I, I could have a joy, a personal joy again, mm -hmm. that I, I sent her an email, you know, like a bottle in the sea, and and I never ever thought that she would ever answer me, but she did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she did, and she said, my God, you're so gifted, you must go on. Uh -huh. And I was pretty awestruck, and we became friends, and now she's one of my closest friends, and uh, one night, I just so my first outdoor. Oh. And I said, okay, what is it? 
Okay, so <laughs> when you sold your first art doll, how many dolls have you made before that? Or no, no. Oh, that you made you, you made the dragon and the the art doll, or you, the dragon you sold? I, didn't I, get. So, uh, I sold a few dragons and okay. a few turtles and a few beings, you know, because I always make creatures and, uh -huh. and weird stuff. But uh, uh, once I first uh, I started my first doll, I, I just sold it and. Oh, wow, nice. The reason why I sculpted our dolls is because th that very night I was talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw a legend written on a website, I don't remember which one. It, it said, uh, um, an art doll is a character, is a person with a soul, an art, and it has a present, a past, and a future. Mm -hmm. And in the world, the best doll makers can make living, perfect beings in their dolls. And so I thought, okay. I couldn't make my son perfect, but uh, I'm going to make our dolls nice. because I, I need to make something perfect and living. Mm -hmm. So I decided to make our dolls and, and even now, I'm a professional doll maker, but even now, you know, uh, for me, I, I'm sculpting for my redemption. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why I sculpt. This is not the business. It helps me to feed my kid and, and that's all really wonderful but that is not the point for me the point for me is that uh, when when I knew that my son was that handicapped you know and, and, and in my country it's horrible because uh, people are sh pointing you with their fingers in the streets and it's very very hard to leave yeah. uh, I just lost my soul you know it I don't know where it where it went but it, it's gone mm -hmm. uh, and uh, <clears throat> Yeah, you know, that there's a, a, a funny thing, there's a, um, a movie called 21 Grams. Mm -hmm. It's a story about the soul and, and, and it weight. uh, its weight, and uh, every human being is losing 21 grams at the very moment of his death. Whatever your gender, your age, your, your weight, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter, it's a scientific fact. And I realized that I lost my 21 grams and I'm just trying to catch it back mm -hmm. with my dolls, you know, trying to make something perfect. And the funny thing is that in America, uh, the, the autistic person are called the hummingbirds mm -hmm. because they are the only person capable to see every bit of the wing of a hummingbird while well, well, it flies. Right. And uh, a hummingbird is weighing 21 grams. Wow. wow. So, you know. That's amazing. Uh, that's amazing. So, and so as a matter of fact, when I saw my very first doll, it was just to afford a little more clay. <laughs> That's <laughs> all. I, I didn't even have the time to wonder what was going on because uh, I popped up on Facebook and uh, I found many, many, many doll makers and I found somebody that I just adore. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is Marlene from the CDHM. This is a community of uh, miniaturist artists, and uh, she said, okay, you're talented, I'm, I'm going to help you, I'm going to be there for you. And she did everything she could for me. Mm -hmm. And I had suddenly, you know, uh, what must be understood is that uh, I'm coming so, from so dark a way. Mm -hmm. You know, I had no friend left, because when you have an autistic child in, in France, you, you, you just end up all alone. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, I had no friend, no, no hobby, I, I was going nowhere and suddenly bam, you know, I had all this crowd on, and I discovered that doll makers are like a tribe, you know, mm -hmm. we're like a family. Right. And it's been awesome and I just didn't have the time to think because people were saying, well, when will be your next one? I'd like to reserve it. Okay, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so I was very, very happy. But this is thanks to Marlene and what she did for me because she promoted my work so much. Mm -hmm. And she made of me a teacher too. Oh. So I taught on her website, thanks to her. And uh, uh, yeah, if I'm here today, you know, and having my own little company, this is thanks to her first and Christy too. And, and how long ago was your first dragon? Three years and a half ago. So it's not a long time, right? And and the situation no. today is totally different for you. Totally different. At this totally at this time different. that you were finding these new friends, you you were basically using forums, Facebook. The place that 
open the world to me has been Facebook. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is where I found all my collectors. This is where uh, I found some of the most important people in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Facebook has been and is still uh, really the center of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. I sold for, uh, on eBay. On eBay. But the fees were very high because I'm in France. Right. So uh, that that was a problem for me. Mm -hmm. So uh, finally, <laughs> I just made so something that I, I don't know if everybody did it, but I did it that way. You know, I was publishing a, a picture on Facebook and saying it's available. Okay. <laughs> and people were sending me a PM, you know, and I was selling like that. And wow, oh, that's good. So tell me, how is your business today? Oh, my business today. Uh, I discovered ball jumper dolls. Uh huh. And it's been for me, you know, like a revelation. You know, it's it's it was amazing to think that dolls could move exactly uh -huh. like human beings. And as I'm trying to make something the most living possible, uh, seeing those dolls moving was wow, you know. Uh -huh. And I decided to make one. So it's been a big improvisation because uh, I never ever ever saw. Uh, Ball jump doll for real when I started, you know, mm -hmm. it was just deductions and, and photos I found on internet, you know, about the parts out there made and uh -huh. so I, I started to make some and uh, a very dear friend of mine, Chris, bought my very, very first one paper clay uh, ball jump doll and then, you know, uh, when you make ball jump doll, you enter another space of the doll world, you know, this is different from, from one of a kind out dolls. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I met someone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I met someone who completely changed my life. This is Paul at Goudreau. She's the founder and designer and sculptor at Goudreau Dolls, and she's from Texas. Wow. And uh, she, yeah, <laughs> she she opened the very first American company for ball jump dolls. So she's very very renowned, uh -huh. and uh, well. We just fell in love, you know. <laughs> it's not friendship. It's, she's just my other self. Nice. This is how I call her. She's my other self. And she said, okay, you must make ball jump to dolls. I tried to make porcelain ball jump to dolls. Mm -hmm. It worked. But uh, it wasn't that good because, you know, it's very, very time consuming to right. make one porcelain doll. It takes about two weeks if you work very hard to make a doll. And... Uh, uh, I needed to make more. Mm -hmm. So uh, at this very moment, uh, Paulette said, okay, we're going to do something. I'm going to send you some ball jump to dolls of mine. So she sent me my first ball jump to dolls. Oh, how cool. She said, yeah, she's awesome. And she said, um, I want a prototype in one week. Wow. I said, okay. <laughs> And she said, I want a little elf, I want it to be cute, I want it to have a little big head, and I want it to be very special, so just do it. So I did, and this is how my first resin ball jumper doll is born. She's named Aliyah. And uh, when the prototype has been made, she said, okay, now this is my manufacturer. And I just received an email from China mm -hmm. saying, okay, you want to produce? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm afraid, what are you doing? Uh -huh. And she, she completely forced me to make it. Uh -huh. Because I, I was really terrorized, you know, I was so scared. So I, I would have never thought that people could buy so many, many dolls of mine. Mm -hmm. And I had no money, you know, because everything I was earning was to feed my children and to afford the material to work. Right. So. I never thought, you know, I, I could just, I, I remember I had just $50 wow. and I started the production, I opened the pre-order and Paulette said, okay, you're going to do good, <laughs> you're going to do good, I want you to do it and you're going to be a company. I was scared as hell, but I did it and well, it worked because I sold, the, it was my very, very first resin called Jantadol and I sold 72 Aligas. Wow, nice. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I was, that was not a happy dance. That was miraculous. Yes, miraculous. <laughs> yeah. You actually threw a party, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was a party myself, you know. <laughs> so th that was really, really amazing. And, uh, and uh, so you had 72 alias that you saw, right? Right. Uh, and, and you still use Facebook for that? Of course. Oh, nice. Of course. Very good. Of course. Uh, and that doll, you know, she's 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 my good luck because I named her after a very very dear friend of mine, Alea Clay. She's one of the greatest miniaturists in 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 the U.S. Okay. And she's a great friend of mine. So, I named that doll after her. And now Alia herself, the real one, is making Bolgian dolls too. So, you know, <laughs> nice. it, it's win win. Uh -huh. <laughs> she brought luck, and now she makes Bolgian dolls too. And yeah, it, it was it was amazing to see the, 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 the response of the public about my, my resin girls. Mm -hmm. But I must say that uh, I have many, 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 many friends on fra on Facebook, and they all promoted me. Oh, okay, nice. They, they, they know I'm a very anxious and nervous person, so, you know, they will be anxious. It's going to be okay. I, I just published on my page, too. <laughs> and uh, suddenly, you know, I met thousands and dozens of collectors asking me the price and mm -hmm. I was a little overwhelmed you know but that that was fantastic nice. really fantastic nice now after Alia how many other dolls came after her so uh, after that I met Humpty Dumpty uh -huh. uh, she's uh, a character that I created because when I was a kid I made a mistake <laughs> I felt that you know Humpty Dumpty had a QP body yeah. but uh, I was wrong and when I discovered that empty empty was wasn't represented that way I said okay I'm gonna make mine I'm gonna <laughs> make it how I see it and uh, again I sold 75 of them mm -hmm. then I make a uh, tiny Susie she's a, a micro Belgian doll she's, she's 10 centimeters tall and uh, about four inches tall and uh, she's a little elf and I sold so far 83. Wow. Yeah, nice. this is amazing. Uh -huh. And uh, I got three prototypes at my factories now. And uh, Etty's pre-order is open. She's a swan lady. Mm -hmm. After that, I will have Mahia. She's the sister of Aliyah. Uh -huh. And after that, I will keep on making, you know, uh, Alice in Wonderland, and uh, I'm going to make Erasbeth, mm -hmm. the Red Queen. Of course. And, uh, yeah, I, I just show the prototype, and, and I already have almost 80 reserved. Wow, nice, so, nice. Yeah. We are living in a moment where we all feel we don't have a voice. Exactly. And and this movement I call the BJD movement is exactly this. You know, I can get that blank doll, or uh, and I can give something from me to her, and now exactly. start expressing and storytelling. I think this is the new format of storytelling. Exactly. Uh, and my collectors want my dolls because they say that, you know, they feel like having somebody with them. Mm-hmm. This is the reason why, you know, I, I, I'm very, very close to my collectors. Uh, it amazes people when, when they discover that, but uh, I, I really think that we're a team, uh -huh. you know. Mm -hmm. I'm here to, to fulfill their desires, I'm here to, to help them to express themselves. Yeah. So what I do, you know, when I make a prototype, I, I just make a poll on my, on my website and I say, okay, which one do you prefer, <laughs> why, uh, would you like to have uh, some modification, what color uh -huh. of resin do you want, you know. I, I really, they really are a part of the process mm -hmm. in my doll making, and I publish pictures from the very day I sculpt the head till the, the, the very resin doll I receive. So you allow but, them to see the whole process. But again, you know, uh, because I believe in this individuality of the Belgian doll, I never ever make the same face up. Oh, I see. So, <laughs> so uh, that's a little bit of crazy, you know, uh -huh. but uh, my collectors, you know, receive an email and I say, okay, if you require a face-up from me, which one? What do you want? Just explain. So now, you know, it's like a deal between them and I. Uh -huh. They can ask for what they want and I just do it. I don't feel alone anymore. Uh -huh. you know? That's good. They're all, yeah, they're all around me while I sculpt and, and 
I'm very, very, very lucky. That's right. <laughs> you know, we are in the age of personalization, right? So all businesses right. that personalize and customize, they tend to succeed because that's what people want and we have to give what they want, right? Exactly. And, you know, I, I want to remain an artist. I, I don't want to be a... a, a, a because often people are comparing uh, artists making resin ball jumper doll with a factory mm -hmm. to a toy maker. I'm not a toy maker. Yes. You know? mm. I'm a sculptor. Uh, uh, I mean, it's a lot of work. Uh -huh. I work about 15 to 17 day, 17 hours a day. Wow. So uh, I, I, this is my only occupation mm -hmm. because I have no time for something else except sleep a little. <laughs> but I am not a tone maker. I really want to propose a nod doll every day mm -hmm. and every time to every of my collectors. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is very, very important to me. And as you know, I spoke to, to find God, mm -hmm. you know, to find myself back too and to find an answer mm -hmm. to everything I lost. Uh, I really need, you know, to, to not make it uh, factor like mm -hmm. I don't want to. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I, I I make, every time I make someone for somebody, uh -huh. this is how I that, That's the special thing. Yeah. Well, where do you see your business going now? Ah, oh, my God. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I just, I just want to keep on doing what I do because uh, I was realizing recently that uh, this is the only thing I, I know, you know, I, I cannot do something else because uh, uh, give me a piece of clay, you know, and one hour later you can have a doll, but oh my god, there's a lot of things that I, I don't know how to do and, and, and even, you know, I realized that since I became an artist, I've always been a little like that, but since I'm an artist, you know, I'm totally lost in my daily life. Yeah. You know, I, I, I mean, every time I have to make grocery shop, I'm like, oh my God, this is Armageddon. <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm very, very lucky because I live with my mother and my mother is making all the daily life things for me. Mm -hmm. She knows, you know, that uh, this is, I'm not made for that. <laughs> so uh, I realized that if one day I have to, you have a normal job, so to speak. My God, I'm lost. <laughs> you know, I cannot do that. Uh, I, 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 and I don't want to. I don't want to change my life now. Mm -hmm. It's been very, very difficult to be where I am today. I had to suffer a lot. Mm -hmm. I had to uh, sacrifice a lot too, because mm -hmm. when you work 17 hours a day, you you cannot have a date. Mm -hmm. yes. You have to face it. You know. Uh -huh. uh, I, I need my mother to help me constantly to to raise my children. So, you know, I, I won't move with a guy. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I can't. And uh, I, I realized that sculpting is for me uh, like a kind of apology, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, every single day of my life, even on Christmas, even on New Year's Day, even for the birthday of everyone, I'm sculpting, you know. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, no, I, I, I couldn't have another life. That's good. And I don't want now, to. Now, if yeah. people want to know more about you, where should they go? On my website. <laughs> Which is? <laughs> Which is <laughs> www.sickerscane.com. Okay. And they can go on Facebook and tap my name and they will I will pop up and they can have me as a friend. As a you know, I, th I think that's awesome because that. it's it's... It's clear that you have a lot of friends, and you were a very giving person, uh, and it, it's, it's well, amazing. Well, you know, I have to love people. Uh huh. I mean, yeah, because I, I spent about three years of my life absolutely lonely, mm -hmm. you know, and I had nobody to talk to. I had no future. I only had pain. Uh, I mean, a lot of people went through that, but to me, you know, well, when I see someone, this is just so amazing, yeah. you know, and uh, I have been rejected by people in the street uh -huh. when I was going out with my, both of my children, but because mm -hmm. of my younger son, right. and I must say that now, when somebody is telling me, oh, I love you, you're so kind, you're so nice for me, you know, it's just 
a miracle.